Hey, how's it going? Keith Townsend from the CTO Advisor. We're going to talk Google VMware Engine. What the heck is it? I found out that last week at Tech Field Day 21, uh, first off, COVID-19 threw a monkey wrench in Tech Field Day. We, me and 11 other influencers were to fly to the Googleplex and hear Google present on their acquisition of Cloud Simple and COVID-19 happened. So we ended up doing this virtually and I've done plenty of Tech Field Day events. It went okay. Uh, but a mountain of information I'm hoping to share with you in this hot take. First off, what is Google VMware Engine? It is the renamed platform for a company that Google bought called Cloud Simple. If you remember at VMworld 2019, Pat Gelsinger got up on stage and announced that VMware vSphere is available across all the major cloud providers. VMC on AWS, VMware Cloud on AWS for the AWS platform, um, VMware Azure Services on Azure, and uh, VMware Cloud Simple on Google. Google went and bought the farm when it comes to Cloud Simple. Cloud Simple provided a solution inside of v, uh, inside of Azure for a vSphere solution. There's a competing solution, but I think the, the most well-known solution is the Cloud Simple solution. And they had started to work with Google to release a version based off of VMware Cloud Foundation within Google, Google Compute platform. So what's difference between what's the difference between VCF and Cloud Simple and VMware Cloud on AWS? Well, we learned all of this at Tech Field Day 21. Well, indirectly. They didn't talk about VMC on AWS by name, but we talked about competitive solutions. And the competitive solution is VMC on AWS. First off, VMC on AWS is VMware's premier vSphere partner for public cloud. They get the bits first, they get all the engineering resources, get an example of the, the might of those engineering resources. VMware and AWS worked out a system in which EBC, Elastic Block Storage, the basic building block for storage in AWS, uh, will be presented to vSAN, not via the local NVMe and spinning drives inside of the i3 instances that make up VMC on AWS, but via an abstraction layer that uh, AWS wrote, basically drivers for vSAN that abstracts away the underlying hardware. So AWS can present any EBS storage to VMware vSAN and VMware can take it from there and build your vSAN cluster. Google and, and VMware doesn't have, don't have that cool solution going on. So why should you even consider Google VMware Engine, which is really hard to say by the way, GVE. We'll just say GVE, why should you Consider GVE over VMC on AWS, if you like those acronyms. Uh, it is a different solution, actually. Uh, GVE is taking the VMware Cloud Foundation base, which allows any cloud provider, whether it's one of the major cloud providers or IBM, Oracle, or any VMware vCloud partner, you can take the, the basic building block blocks of the VMware Cloud, which includes uh, vRealize, VMware vSphere, NSX, T, and uh, of course vSAN. You can take all those components and build a cloud-based vSphere service and offer vSphere up to customers. You don't have to be a mega cloud provider. You can be the CTO advisor who just opened the data center. You wanna provide VMware as a service. I can take this VCF platform and use that to resell services. But this is Google and that's not 
all they're going to do. They're going to do it at Google scale. Uh, one of the things I found interesting is that the Google Cloud team kind of announced this Cloud Simple team is now the face of Google Enterprise Cloud Solutions. They understand the enterprise, and I think they show this in how they're approaching giving VMware administrators and architects the keys to VCF as it's run in Google Cloud. Instead of kind of hiding the underlay completely away from customers like they do on VMC on AWS, I don't get administrative rights to the actual vSphere host. I can't install another Tech Field Day presenter, Zerto, directly onto the MIPS, directly onto the vSphere host. That direct access to the vSphere host is abstracted away from me. I have to buy into a service. This created some problems early on for VMC on AWS. I would take my backup software, my DR software, uh, third-party management tools, try to deploy them in VMC on AWS, and they just didn't work. Even some of VMware's own products didn't initially work in VMC on a a AWS. In theory, GVE, Google VMware Engine, won't have that problem because they're giving you the keys, so to speak, to the host. You're getting a higher level of access where you can act actually install any supported piece of software into your vSphere environment. So you want to do Zerto replication from one uh, from your on-prem solution to your Google public cloud VMware host, you can do that. If you want to uh, mount NFS volumes directly from NetApp's cloud volume service um, deployed in Google Cloud, you can do that. The latency would be pretty bad, but if your VMs don't need that, if your applications don't need low high, high late, I mean, I'm sorry, low latency. You can provision more storage. You can use it as a backup target, as an analytics target. You can do some type of storage tiering. You can build solutions that you want to bare metal, basically with VCF and GVE that you can't necessarily do in VMC on AWS. It is a horses for courses piece. What are some of the other disadvantages to this approach. I think one of the biggest ones is the lack of integration, this engineering relationship. The AWS console and the VMware on AWS solution is starting to become more and more integrated. I can do things from my AWS console that directly impact my uh, VMC on AWS environment. What's the counter argument for Google solution? Well, there's Anthos. So Microsoft has Azure Stack, the ability to run uh, Azure in your on-premises data center. Google has Anthos, the ability to run their Kubernetes distribution controlled by Google's cloud control plane on-premises on your vSphere host. You can extend that environment into the public cloud. So you have this inception piece where I'm running Anthos on-premises and I'm also running Anthos on-premises, I mean off-prem in the public cloud on a vSphere host. Why would I want to do that? Well, then we're getting into kind of the, this argument of, of oversubscription and all the advantages of on-prem billing that I don't get in public cloud. We start to get into that mix that we talked about earlier on the channel. So my high level thoughts, really cool stuff. Uh, I can still use use VMware HCX to extend my NX, NSXT environment from my on-premises solution into Google's GVE solution. All of these features that AWS sells about extending my VMware operations model into public cloud, I'm more or less get with the Google solution once it's released. Uh, one last thing, uh, as you're looking at vSphere 7, what about vSphere 7? AWS on, I'm sorry, VMC on AWS will get vSphere 7 before all of the VCF providers. 
the disadvantage of VCF is it's not the latest and greatest every two month, every two or three month release cycle that AWS and VMware have uh, come to. It is going, you're going to get the bits in your public cloud instance in Google the same time that everyone else gets the VCF bits. So slower innovation, some customers may not necessarily care about that if you are strongly inclined to use Google's other services. I'd love to know what you think. Is Does this whole thing have legs? Running vSphere and public cloud, what does what does AWS, Google, Azure see that I'm not seeing on Twitter? All of my Twitter friends are kind of scratching their head to why, why does this matter? It obviously does because each cloud provider is continuing to make an investment. I'd love to hear from you on Twitter at CTO Advisor is the Twitter handle. TheCTOAdvisor.com is the website. Talk to you next CTO Dope.